Now that the town of Otter Creek has a new lawyer, do you think she'll be loyal to Russ the Sus and Don DeCon, or do you think she'll be pivotal and vital in sending them to jail? Mark Matthew writes and says, Why didn't the town attorney say anything to Russell about taking the recordings out of town hall? You think she'd know the guidelines on that matter? She does know the guidelines. I assure you of that. She actually represents some other towns and little cities. So we're not the first. So she knows the proper way and the proper things. And you also, after you got to understand, there's also professionalism. So if she has an issue, she's hired to represent the town. She's not there to represent the residents, unfortunately, but the residents are the town. I, I understand where your mind is going. She's there to represent the town, but the residents make up the town, but the residents actually voted in these council members, and she's there to represent these council members. So if they do something foolish, illegal, I seriously doubt, based on professionalism, she's going to call them out in the middle of a meeting. She's going to take them aside later and go, listen, you do that again, you're creating liability for yourself, liability for the town. This is not okay. Now, she knows it's not okay. And as a matter of fact, Belinda specifically stated it in front of her. So there is no excuse for not knowing it's okay. As a matter of fact, this is the same attorney that is trying to get text messages and other information from Russell. Oh, that's right, that's right. That phone accidentally went missing and broke. User lots of letters and lots of numbers says, so what could happen if no good candidates, and good is in parentheses, run for the next council election and only the bad people decide to run because they don't care about declaring that they, ha they have anything whatsoever. If only the shady people run and no one opposes them, do they automatically win by default? And the answer is yes, unfortunately. So you're asking in regards to form six. And in form six, this, this form has already been present for higher ups in government, okay? This is now hitting the local governments. And these individuals have never seen anything like this before. And they claim it's a complete and total evasion of privacy. And I have a, I have a apt to agree with them completely. That's why I'm not in government. I don't want to be in government. So if that takes out the good people who go, you have no business knowing what the value of everything in my home is or every liability I have or every, every asset I have or what's in the trust or what's in you know, my vehicle is worth. And by the way, to fill this information out, if they do it wrong, it falls under the Florida Ethics Committee now. And if they do it wrong, there's some pretty hefty, huge fines. You you almost need to be a CPA to actually fill this, this form out and have the information correct. So if you do it wrong, you are going to be penalized and you can also be booted. Okay, So you can be financially penalized and completely and totally impeached or booted. So uh, if you have nothing and you go, okay, well, I don't care because I have nothing to declare. All, you have to declare all your liabilities as well. Every mortgage, everything you own. If it's over $1,000 and you own it on your vehicle, on your camper, on your, on your property, on your, it could be school, it could be education, you're paying for somebody's college. All of those liabilities must be addressed. And the Florida Ethics wants to know them all because if all of a sudden you have a bank account that has absolutely nothing in it, and now all of a sudden there's $100,000 in it, who are you taking bribes from? And how in the world are these debts being paid off immediately? You have $200,000 in debts and now you only have $10,000 in debts? So I see where you're going. Shady people will win by default. Absolutely. So that's what you're literally seeing is these good business-minded individuals who go, my life needs privacy. Nobody has any business knowing what I have in my homes. And it doesn't need to be out. And China doesn't need to know. And Japan doesn't need to know. And Russia doesn't need to know. And Korea doesn't need to know. Because all of this will not be protected on the internet. I mean, I, once Russ runs, if Russ runs, you and I will have everything on him. Now, if he does it wrong, he's going to have some huge fines, and then he can be booted out, right? But if he does it right, we can have everything on him. And, and, and that's a scary thought. That's a scary thought if I was Russ, and that's a scary thought of me thinking about all of you wanting to get his information. And as I've said so many times before, don't do anything foolish. Always, always allow the law to handle it correctly. 
Denise Raft writes in and says, Jeremy, I got a question. What if the two usual suspects, LOL, meaning Russ the Sus, Don the Con, show up for the January council meeting? They have not met the ruling on disclosing all their information to the state. Can they continue to serve as of that date or can the mayor excuse them from the town meeting? Okay, the mayor, from my understanding, does not have the authority to excuse them. The ethics committee has the authority to excuse them. So there is a reality that they show up and they didn't fill out their forms because Mary did everything for Russ and Mary did everything for Don. And it wasn't right. It was always done wrong. And now they have penalty of huge fines, as I just addressed, if it's done wrong. So Florida ethics committee can come in and boot them out. Who in their right mind would actually want to participate into something like this? And this is Florida big government either purposefully or unintentionally pushing out small local government. Now, there's bonuses to that. You get rid of Russ the Sus, Don the Con. There is no more small corruption hidden, hidden under the rug, things along those lines. And then the bad part about that is we all know there's corruption in bigger government as well. And what they're going to do is swallow up the big corruption and their corruption might even get bigger. Samantha Spring has the world record for the longest question. Like, this is out of control, Samantha. But I'm going to go for it anyway. Could the community center not set up some type of first aid station for community events? Okay, that's a good question. Such as Christmas in the Creek, the dollar sale days, community yard sales and such. Just a thought. I'm so sorry that Georgia still isn't feeling well. George, you feeling any better? She's, Samantha says she could hear it in your voice. You know, let's just stop right there. I'm going to go ahead and answer those questions. So can the community center not be set up for some type of first aid station? Well, considering that they're going to say that it's going to be used for shots and vaccinations and, and, and medical issues, number one, I would hope that they actually adhere to that and do something medical. We have incredible people that are ready to serve and volunteer in Otter Creek. Deborah Thomas, who lives over at Shady Oaks Campground, who's been helping with Christmas in the Creek. She's, she's a retired nurse. This woman knows her stuff. And I bet you, if somebody came along and said, hey, you know, would you be willing to help the town of Otter Creek with medical issues? I bet she would jump at the opportunity because that's the quality of a person that she is. You've got to understand they're so beautiful, generous, loving, giving, knowledgeable people in Otter Creek. And so I truly hope that they actually use it for what the, the, the money is intended for as they're going for the grant, if it does get built. Now, she goes on to Samantha says, such as Christmas in the Creek, dollar sales, community yard sales, and things along those lines. So again, I would hope that it would be used for those types of things. But you also have to understand, if you're going to build a community center, you have to staff it. It has utilities. You have to have insurance. You've got liabilities. Where's this community center going to go? Where's the land? Where's the property? What's the infrastructure to put it in? And I think you, when you're thinking community center, you're thinking, well, we're going to have this huge building. No, no, no. $850,000 is going to do very, very little. It's going to be a... It, our ranch house is going to be bigger than the community center because when you're building commercial and you have infrastructure to put in and utilities to put in and all of those, they're going to run out of money in no time flat. And they truly don't even know how much it's going to cost. What if they run out of money before it's even being done built? Okay. But she goes on, she says, could town hall have things like vacation Bible school for children? Well, they could. I mean, but you also have the, the church there's few churches in Otter Creek, actually, believe it or not. I know it's hard to believe. This seems like there's actually more churches than there are people, and the people don't go to the churches. But I digress. Uh, you've got churches that are truly taking care of those things. Now, I understand there's also going to be people who go, well, what about separation of church and state? Listen, this whole issue of separation of church and state, 99.9 .9 of you even watching don't even understand the issue. The issue is that the government can never tell you that you can't go to this church and this is the one church, okay? That's the issue of church and state. You're always... Church can be at town hall. You can have vacation Bible school at town hall. You can do these things. It's the government can't come in and say, you must adhere to this one church. That's the issue of separation of church and state. Government can't tell you what to do with your churching. Okay? You can get your church on anywhere you want to get it on. Samantha goes on to say, or computer tutorial classes for seniors. 
you know what? I know a couple in Otter Creek that could use that. Again, you have to have the computers. Where's the money coming from? You're going to have to have the people to teach them. I know there's some people who would volunteer their time. For example, when Richard was painting Town Hall, the same time we were painting the schoolhouse. And I told the, some of the individuals on council, I was like, we can't come this week. We would love to help volunteer. And because we're painting, we have to get it done for Christmas in the creek. They said, well, we'll be done by then. We would have loved Deanna, George, myself to come and help Richard paint Town Hall and make it look beautiful again. She also asked, could a community center not set up something like senior services, like Meals on Wheels, etc.? Okay, Samantha, you got a ton of ideas, but your ideas are coming out of larger cities, okay? This is a town of 100 people and almost no children, almost no young life. All of this costs money. It all, Even if there's volunteer services, it's going to cost money. All of it. So you have to ask your question, where's the money coming from? Now, Otter Creek has very little money, and the residents will tell you they have very little money, and most of them are living on some type of assistance and things along those lines. And there's there's nothing wrong with that if they need that. But what you're saying is, can we feed them? Yeah, you can feed them, but none of this is free even if you have volunteers, it's still not free. Where's all the food coming from? Where's everything coming from to actually cook the food? Where is the utilities? Who's paying for all the utilities to actually prepare the food? Now we've got gasoline or diesel to go get the food to the people on the wheels. Vehicles, upkeep, maintenance. The list goes on and on. Everything you're bringing up, it costs money. And that's one thing Otter Creek doesn't have. Sabatory is asking, will Madam Mayor and Vice Mayor run again? Well, Madam Mayor and Vice Mayor don't need to run again in this next election. Remember, they have a two-year term. So this upcoming election, their seats are solid. They, they stay, okay? They're the two that actually stay. Don the Con, his term is up. Russ the Sus, his term is up. And then Gail stepped down, so we have to vote in her term as well. So there's three right there. Or you may be asking, are they going to stay in regards to, or will they run again in regards to Form 6? The deadline is December 30th. We just don't know. Susan Myers is asking the exact same question, but she has a different follow-up question. She says, will Madam Mayor Therese remain mayor until she goes up for re-election, or can she be voted out after the next April election? In regards to if Don and Russ's friend which isn't even a friend. The enemy of my enemy is now my friend. They will all turn on each other. That's all they do. They turn on each other. They backbite. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's so childish. Really, it's childish. And uh, it, it's annoying to live in the midst of it. But if Don and Russ's friend gets voted in, could they force her out? So Susan, I know what you're saying. You're saying, well, if it's three against two, can they boot her out? And... The reality is this, the mayorship position gets voted on a yearly basis. So Madam Mayor is currently the mayor, right? So at the last election, they actually voted her and she was approved as the mayor. That was a three against two vote. She's in. Now, if Don and Russ get their frenemy in, and there's three against Zim and Madam Mayor, can she be overruled for mayorship? And the answer is yes, because the mayorship position is a yearly voted on position. Even though Madam Mayor Therese has a two-year term, that mayorship is one year. They would all have to vote her again to be mayor for a second year term. Now, you already know if there's three against two, what's going to happen? And who in their right mind would ever, ever vote Russ the Sus back in as mayor. Lois writes in and says, could the money, meaning the grant money, be used for some sort of shelter for hurricane protection? Well, Lois March, you're already looking at that in regards to the community center. So the community center would have to be built up to hurricane codes. Again, very expensive and it would be very small. I do not think you will ever be able to get 100 people or 100 residents of Otter Creek inside that shelter. But nonetheless, that's what they're looking to do. So they would have to build this. Community center could double as hurricane protection. So last hurricane that came in, we opened up the schoolhouse to the community. Anybody who wanted to come in could. We had a number of different people spend the night and then leave in the morning. And that was great that we could do that. But it would be even more comfortable to George and I if there was a... Yeah, we have a 100-year-old building. And we realize that. And it's 
stood the test of time, but it's still 100 years old. It's not built to the new regulations, the new hurricane regulations that a new structure would be built to. So I would feel a million times better if the new community center was built to those regulations and people would actually seek shelter there because I feel it's actually safer than the old schoolhouse, even though the thing has stood for 100 years. I would hope a brand new building would stand for a couple hundred. Maureen Wood brings up such an important point. She says, what's Otter Creek going to do if cost overrun on the community center? Have an incomplete building, which would be a complete and total eyesore? And that's huge, Maureen, because I don't know of any construction project that has ever come in under budget or on time, except one. It was the Hoover Dam, believe it or not. Government building project, not a building, building project, and it was on time and under budget. But people's lives were at stake for that as well, if you go back and look at your history. So when you're going, okay, we have hundred or $850,000 to build this building. Number one, we know it's not going to get up in time. It's not going to be on time. And there is no real budget. Fluctuations in, in building materials go all over the place. So that is huge. Okay, we have this much money. Now they're going to try and build to the specs of trying to spend it all and they're going to go over. And where's the rest of the money come from? Uh, uh, Jeremy and George, uh, uh, maybe rest of the stuff will be like, uh, Jeremy and George, if, if, if you give us the money, if you're done fixing to give us the money, I'll be your Grinch at Christmas in the Creek next, next, next Christmas. Yeah, I don't think so. It ain't coming from us, and I'm pretty sure it is not coming from the rest of the residents as well. <laughs> they're not going to be able to raise enough money in taxes. I have no idea what they're going to do, but I think that's a real situation and scenario. Nancy Mark says, after Form 6 is filled in and submitted, who's checking to see if the information is complete and correct? What happens if there's false information submitted? Okay, so Nancy, here's, here's the biggest thing with the form. I've, I've alluded to this already, but let's expand on this. You almost need to be a CPA. Okay, to fill this out. And I would have to have my CPA to fill this out. But George and I's situation are a little bit different than, than probably vast majority of Outer Creek. And there's nothing wrong with that. And that's not bragging. It's not complaining. It's just reality. We're talking reality right now, right? So what about another individual, let's say Outer Creek, and they want to run? I would still, to transfer liability, so liability is not on me, have a CPA fill out that form. Because if you're done wrong, I think minimum, I'm not sure, but I think it's very hefty fines. I think minimum fine is like $1,500. Impeachment, removal from service forever is part of the fining. So ethics committee can literally come in, check up on everything you did if you lied. And you would think ethics committee is actually going to do this. They've got to be pretty serious about this or why would they bring it into the local communities and local government? You got to think that they're, they're dead set on this. Um, I would be extremely concerned if that form isn't filled out right. And then number one, I have to pay a ton of money. A minimum fine of 1500 If you're serving as a council member in Otter Creek right now, you're making 1200 for the year. You're not even making enough to pay the fine if you do the paperwork incorrectly, if you falsify the paperwork. I, and I'm sure there's probably things such as felonies and perjury. There's probably all kinds of things that are out there to which would make a person go, listen, I don't even know if I can fill this thing outright, such as me. I would go, I, I, I probably can't even fill this outright. I don't even want to touch this form because the consequences are too big for what I'm receiving in return $1,200 a month. I love my town and I love the people, but I'm not going to put myself under those types of consequences. Maria wants to know, how come last year when Russ the Sus was mayor, Don the Con could hear, and now he has a hearing problem from the war? Well, Maria, I think you've probably figured this out, like the rest of the people, that he's being coached to say this by a person who's just increasing the legal liability of Russ the Sus, Don the Con, other individuals. And um, th they are not getting wise counsel by any stretch of the imagination. So you bring up a good point. Never in the past has Don brought this up, ever. And he's been serving on this council upwards of 30 years now. This is the first time? This is the first time it's ever been brought up? Um, meetings have been filmed all the way back. We showed a meeting that Russ the Sus's daughter filmed. 
Charlene, 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 Charlene. Ten years ago, Don the Con is in there. And guess what? He was hearing just fine. So, you think it's an excuse? Absolutely. SpongeBob Squeeze says, Most community centers host senior programs, boys and girls clubs, community events, food banks, emergencies, crisis management, anything involving programs the community needs and has no building for. How hard is it to add real reasons for needing a community center? Okay, SpongeBob Squeeze. Most communities aren't 100 people, okay? You, you got to wrap your mind around that. Most communities aren't rural Florida in the middle of nowhere. And yeah, George and I want to be in the middle of nowhere. Our whole goal was to hide in the middle of nowhere. And then we would be two hours from everywhere. And that's the reality. We're two hours from everywhere. So when you say most community centers host senior programs, the seniors here won't even come to town hall. And you say boys and girls clubs, there are very few, less than you can count on one hand for boys and girls. You've got community events. Um, not happening. You saw Russ the Sus literally deny, even though it was budgeted, $500 for Christmas, and mocked Darlene Hudson. What a foolish, foolish leader. By the way, I don't think he's any kind of leader whatsoever, but I'll digress. Okay. Food banks, emergencies, crisis management, anything involving programs for the community that they don't have a building for. And then SpongeBob Squeeze says, how hard is it for real reasons for the community center? What she's trying to communicate is, why would you go to the, to the state for the grant and go, oh, well, we're going to use this for medical reasons and lie to actually get the money? Again, I'm not okay with that. Coyote bait, holding no punches, just throwing it straight out there. Will Zim and Therese resign from council because of this new law, Form 6? All right, Coyote Bait, first and foremost, if I were any of them, I would resign on the 30th. I honestly can't believe any of them were even at the last meeting. That's me personally, okay? Now, that's my own opinion, and that's how I feel, and it's very biased. So we're not going to know until December 30th is the cutoff date for all the information that needs to be filed. And left and right, like every one of these major areas, Donellan, Inglis, Old Town, um, Yankee Town, Chiefland, Cedar Key. I mean, they, these, these council members are dropping like flies, just dropping like flies. And that's what the state wants. I mean, really keep in mind that that is what the state wants. That's why they implemented this. I cannot believe we've only lost one council member so far. So I can tell you if it were me, yep, I'm gone. But I would probably wait until the last day because I would want to serve my time up to the last day in case there was any emergency, in case there was any crisis, in case my community needed me, and then go next day afterwards, things aren't okay. So quality people such as Madam Mayor Therese, Vice Mayor Zim, we're going to have to find out December 31st. Pam Proctor says, if you knew something is a lie, for example, Don saying he lost his hearing in the military, then why doesn't anyone say something right then and there? Pam, there's an appropriateness to a council meeting. You don't just get to jump up and yell and say whatever you want, even though there have been times where you've seen some individuals do that in the meetings. So in a small town community like this, there are some graces granted, but your, your opportunity to speak as the residents is in that three minutes of, hey, what do you want to say? This is public participation. Other than that, you're a spectator. You are literally supposed to sit back in your seat. Now, there are times where I'm filming and you hear people in the crowd say things, or you may even hear me and George laughing because something they said was so ridiculous. Or you might even hear us smacking our heads like, we can't believe we live here. Uh, things along those lines. But there's an appropriateness to that. You get three minutes for public speaking per person, okay, where you can legally say anything you want. If you wanted to go in there and cuss Don the Con out, you legally can. Now, Otter Creek has said, oh, no, no, you have to keep your language to this, this. They can't legally do that. They're opening themselves up to legal liability. You can say 
anything you want, but only during those times. So when Don is declaring, I'm, I'm deaf because of war, that's what happens. All of us watching have to just sit there and shake our heads and go, here we go. More ridiculousness and more excuses. Alex Rogers says, wouldn't you hate to be a grandkid of one of these two knuckleheads? Well, Alex, you've seen in the crowd in the past that one of Russ's grandkids are actually in there almost every meeting this past year. It's his granddaughter. It's Charlene's daughter. And I know, if you've seen Charlene, you're thinking, what? Yep. That's her daughter. And so her daughter brings in her boyfriend. They're there every meeting. They say almost nothing. <laughs> Why they're there? Support for Russell. Maybe the only support for Russell. Because remember, before, Don was 100% against Russell. But yeah, I, I would think that at some point, you know, at, at Christmas, around the table, they got to be thinking, what in the hails have you gotten yourself into, Russ the Sus? Herb says, maybe Don the Con doesn't have an honorable discharge and he doesn't qualify for VA health care benefits. And there's a good chance of that. I mean, we've, we've seen enough information on Don the Con to make us just shake our heads. For example, Don the Con actually called the police when his roommate or a buddy um, lifted all of his uh, medicinal leisure time recreational stuff. In other words, he called the cops on himself when he had illegal, illegal items, okay? Also busted throwing rocks at planes. That's another issue. So would it surprise me that he was not honorably discharged? He was dishonorably discharged? Wouldn't shock me in the least. But I also need to clearly state that we don't know which way that is. Now, George, she's got a plan. She wants to talk to him. She wants to interview him at the next meeting, see if he'll actually fess up. What, what are you over there smiling at right now? I'm trying not to cough. Oh, okay. <clears throat> All right, that was not true. She's over there. <laughs> All right, so we'll find out one way or another. At least we'll attempt to try. Delanda McGee says, Jeremy, if Don and Russ are prosecuted and found guilty, would that disqualify them to sit on the town board? All right, Delanda. First of all, I think you're referring to the, the Tallahassee um, investigator coming to meet with myself and George, and there are other individuals in the town that Tallahassee investigator are meeting with. And I'm pretty sure the town will know when that investigator is here because there'll be certain buildings on lockdown because of it. Uh, and it's coming very soon, within days. So if they are investigated and prosecuted, does that disqualify them from sitting on town board? Well, I, I got to say, at a bare minimum, if they go to jail and they do time, they can't sit on the board. They won't be there at the meetings, right? So we know if they're gone, if they're in jail, they won't be on the meetings. I don't know if the ethics committee would allow them to run again, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm going to say no, but I don't know that 100% for sure. Blue Line of Corruption says, isn't the past attorney, Worm, also responsible for some of the illegal or the legality of improper illegal activities that went on in the town council? He should be held responsible as well. You're absolutely 100% correct. For the lawyer to be there, understanding that this town is getting themselves in more and more liability and not stopping it. Or to the point of, remember, Attorney Worm got them in legal liability as well. When I put in my records request, they had 30 days. Remember, I gave them three years prior. They had 30 days. I gave them a written records request, 30 days to produce everything I asked for, which Mary never in a million years could have done. Number one, because they deleted it. Russell's had it deleted to actually protect himself against criminal activities. And then Attorney Warm messages through an email and says, I'm now responsible for getting this information to you. And guess what happened? Absolutely nothing. Attorney Warm never provided anything. All he did was get them in a lawsuit. And then he wouldn't even stand up and trial for them. They had to go get another lawyer to actually go to court for them. Pretty insane when you think about it. The man actually cost this town 
Th tens of thousands. Tens of thousands of dollars. And on top of that, cost them even more for the lawsuit. Debbie wants to know, George, this is probably more of a you question. Even though she says, Jeremy, if you knew what you know now, would you still buy in Otter Creek? I'm going to change this one up to you. George, if you knew what you knew now, would you still buy in Otter Creek? As far as what's going on in Town Hall, I think we've answered this question before. We're not going to determine what our living needs are for a meeting that occurs one day a month. Okay, so... Buying this ranch checked off a lot of our needs All right. when COVID hit. Answer. We, in the event that the world shut down again, we needed a place. And so we found 70 acres to play on in the event that the world shut down again. And it fit our business model. So, I didn't get a yes or a no, but that's typical when I ask Georgia yes or no questions. So, I'm going to guess, um, yes, I think we would. Peter Robinson writes, do you think Don or Russ will turn their paperwork in by December 30th? Okay, Peter, first thing you have to understand, it's not paperwork. Therefore, there's no paperwork to turn in. It's all done online. Now, my next question going through your mind should be, do they even have the capacity to get online and fill out these forms that a CPA would typically do? And my guess is absolutely not. Uh, we know Don is so far in dementia. I mean, it's obvious Don is struggling with dementia. The man should not be in any function on this council whatsoever. Okay, he has he has limitations that that hold him back from serving to a full capacity of what the town deserves. And so he should be he should be knowledgeable enough of his own situation to step back and go, I am not doing what they voted me to do. Now Russell, on the other hand, is just corrupt, dirty, filthy pig. Okay, uh, and can he actually fill that out? I doubt he actually fills it out. Now, will he get Charlene to do it? There's a good, there's a good chance of that. He's gotten Charlene to go to ethics committee meetings with him, to have his back, to ask questions, to do this, to do that. So my guess is Charlene is actually filling it out for him. And will they get it done in time? I sure hope not. And I, I got to. I'm going to say it openly and honestly. I hope it's done wrong. I hope it's done wrong. They feel the full consequences of what they've put this town and the residents through these past years. Lori asked the question, do you mean even if you bought a $1,000 TV, you have to report this as part of your income to stay or run for office? Okay, Lori, number one, you're not reporting it as income. You're reporting it as assets, which is very different than income. So if you own a $1,000 TV, or if it's a $1,001 TV, yes, that goes on the form. It must be submitted. Anything you owe, anything, anything you own, anything you owe, $1,000 or more must all go on this form. So for example, if this moose is a $5,000 moose mount, okay? And at that time when George and I found this, this moose mount would have went for $5,000. Now, Florida has kind of wreaked some havoc, and we could still get it fixed. But at a bare minimum, this is a $1,000 mount still. This mount would actually have to be listed on Form 6. Now, if you look at George and I's lives, you've seen us find items that are $1,000 or more. Again and again and over and over and over and over and over and over. I mean, I can just look around me right now and I can go, yep, 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 yep. Okay? Uh, and there are some other things that are just completely and totally priceless. But if you've got anything that you own and it's over $1,000 in value, it has to be reported. If you have anything you owe, that could be your kid's college it could be you name it it doesn't matter what it is it all has to be reported sapphire sky says i get grossed out every time russ the sus scratches his head and then he looks to see if there's something in his fingers does he do the same thing when he scratches other parts of his body you mean when russ the sus is Doing all that, um, I'm pretty sure he probably does that with every single part of his body. But I got to tell you, I don't want to see that in a town hall meeting. <laughs> Candace Little wants to know, does your town charter have term limits? 
All right, most governments are going to have some type of term limit. You think of the president, and there's term limits in regards to there. But when you get to a town of 100 people, here's the danger. You, you would love to have term limits. I get it, Candace, because you don't want Russ the Suss and Don the Con back in. But here's the danger. If you put term limits in there, after you get through all 100 people, which there are people who cannot legally run, so let's say you get through 40 of the people who can legally run. Who's going to run now on your town council? There is nobody. So when you're putting term limits in, we often think big government, we think big towns, we think big cities, big everything. But everything in the world isn't big. Now, I'm a person who likes big things. Long driveways, long hallways, you name it, it's big, all right? We got big trucks, we got big trailers, every, we got big moose heads, but this town is small. There can't be a term limit. If there was a term limit, then there wouldn't have been a town council for who knows how many years now. They would have actually cycled through everybody. And the less they brought in new people, and let's face it, all they focused on is pushing good people out. Vicki Porterfield says, wouldn't it just be easier to get sidewalks instead of the community center? Well, Vicki, if you were actually listening to the videos with Mr. Fox, he's plainly states that the easiest thing to do is the community center. Number one, and people keep making comments on this. The town, they can take your land. No, they cannot. And I'm tired of repeating it. This is like the same question we get over and over again. Well, can't they do this with the money? Can't they do? No, there's two things they can do with the money. They can do a community center or sidewalks. That's it. And guess what? On this video, there's going to be so many more questions. Can't they do this with the money? No, they cannot. The easiest thing to do is the community center. How in the world are you going to get all these people together and get them agree to sell the town the money? Or excuse me, sell their property to the town for money because the town can't just come in with eminent domain and take it. And even those who already say, well, the town already has a right of way. No, they don't. Maybe it does in your town, but it's not existing here. They can't just come in and go, I'm taking Jeremy Hale's road frontage and his property and I'm putting in a sidewalk. Nope, doesn't work that way here. Ken has a genius question here. How can they figure the engineering costs without having any idea of the property they're going to build on? Bing, 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 bing. You're the winner, Ken. Okay, how in the world are you going to figure out any costs whatsoever if you don't know where you're going to build and how you're going to build? They don't know. All they know is they have a lump sum of $850,000. Now, to my knowledge, Town Hall actually owns some other property. As a matter of fact, let's get on the auditor's site right now. Let's peek and see where it's at. If we look at the auditor's website right here, here's Town Hall, George. Right there. Okay, Town Hall has uh, 0.23 acres. Now, across the street, no, that's not Town Hall, but... I thought Town Hall owned something else over here. Nope. Church of Jesus Christ. Okay. All right. So if we go, here's the school. If we go down the road, see this right here down the road. Now, this is where Vice Mayor Zim lives. And then look at this. Town of Otter Creek, 3.56 acres. They have this really thin, very weird rectangle piece of property. Almost four acres. What do you do with that piece of property? Community center? Jay asked a pretty good question. Shouldn't the town figure out what the community center is going to house before getting somebody to build it? I mean, is it going to be a pole barn? Is it going to be a couple of mobile homes? Uh, make sure it's got a metal roof. These things are first. Is it going to be a library, arts and crafts, games, pool tables, kitchen, banquet hall? And they've got to decide what to build before it's or right now what he's saying is they've decided to build before they've decided what it's actually for. And you're right, Jay. What they've done is they've scurried because they're going, oh, the government's going to give us free money. It's free money. It's free money. It's free money. No, it's not. It all comes with costs associated with it. And that's what I don't understand. And I've stated this before. The residents of Otter Creek going, oh, well, we have heard from council members that the majority of the residents of Otter Creek, yes, we want it, it's free money. Without any comprehension or understanding, they're going to have to pay taxes on all of this, okay? And they're going to have to fund this building and the operational costs that are associated with it on a yearly basis. This is not by any stretch of the imagination free money. 
But if you were to ask them, will you give up your land for sidewalks because it's free money for sidewalks, I guarantee you probably not even one would give up their land, okay? So this is an aspect of I'm going to get instead of I'm going to give. This is all about us as a community instead of our community saying this is what we want to do for one another. So it's, um, it's concerning, number one, that they're going, oh, this is free money, let's do this, when they have no plan whatsoever. Now, I get that part of it is you have to build a plan. You have to get an engineer. You have to figure out a plan. But they don't know where they're building. They don't know what they're building. They don't know what they're building for, except we know that Mr. Fox is going to say that it's for shots and vaccinations just so they could secure the money, which is not okay. I've said it before. The whole issue that I have with Russ the Sus and Mary Mary is lying, theft, deception, manipulation, and the list goes on and on. Just do the right thing. Tell the government, hey, you know what? COVID is over. We're not doing shots. We're not doing vaccinations. We would love to be a shelter for hurricanes. We would love to do medical things. You know, Jeremy's got dentist friends. He could bring them in. We could try and do dentist checkups. We want to do community yard sales. We want to do, we want to just tell them, tell them what you really want to do at the property. And I bet you the government still says, okay, build the building. But even then they don't know what to build or where it's going to be built yet. These are some pretty major problems. So when you go, oh, I'm just going to take the money and I'm going to run with it, there's no plan in place. And that's concerning. Vicky says, if it comes down to Russ taking over, do you think the town will vote to unincorporate so they don't have to have Russ the Sus in charge again? Well, Vicky, first of all, your, your council has to bring that matter to the residents to unincorporate. So the residents aren't going to trump the council that they voted in and go, hey, unincorporate. The council has to come to the residents and say, we need to unincorporate. Here's what I would propose for Otter Creek. You know what? Let's just settle this. Instead of um, WrestleMania, let's call it WrestleMania. And let's get all these major players who want to run their mouth and want to say stuff, and let's put them in a ring. And I would love to be in that ring with a lot of people, people across the street, people in the town next to me. Put me in the ring with them where there are no consequences. It's WrestleMania 2024.